love hurts, love scars, and it does a few other things. Um, <laughs> a few other things? What does it do? Please elaborate, Kim. It just ruins your life all the oh. time. Um, and that's actually what we're talking about today. Anthropologist and noted love expert uh, Dr. Helen Fisher uh, was describing how romantic love is something as innate in our, our, our beings, not even sexual desire even, as a drive for food and water. And she's done research on this at different stages of, of relationships and a combination of different elements that form a relationship uh, going back in the mind, evolutionarily speaking. Right, so, so she said, there are three aspects that make up, you know, some like our evolutionary drive to be with someone. It's like sex, so that like we, we want sex with everybody and that kind of widens the net for us. Mm -hmm. And then romance, which is like, oh, but I want to be with this person. It's like I bonding, settle down with make them. a partner yeah, to help like, you raise a child. Yeah, and, and then, uh, the last attachment. one. Attachment. Attachment. So you will stay with the person and tolerate them until you raise your child together. And it's all geared towards like child rearing. It's all towards geared toward passing on your DNA as everything is. I mean we look at studies like why do men love big butts and can't lie about it? Well it's because you know they can uh, that would mean like wider hips and more successful chance of raising offspring. But from an evolutionary sense, this is also like uh, these three elements are designed to make sure that there's two partners, two people in a partnership taking care of a child that would survive infancy. I would like to point out that sure. monogamy also statistically is not necessarily like the one and only um, thing. Yeah, you know, girl. I mean, just Get it. it's... It's, and, and plus, these days, we've evolved past the need for dyadic relationships. Yes. Well, this is, um, I'm glad you brought that up because there are a few problems with this in the current age. We don't necessarily need two partners to make sure a baby survives past infancy uh, in the modern era. One would work. One has worked for a while. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah, things are way different than our Savannah Plains ancestors. So I, I feel like this model is... We, we don't really need it anymore, honestly. Mm -hmm. We could take any one of those three aspects of that, that she said, the, the romance, sex. I mean, you could adopt or, a child. You don't yeah, need to do any of that. Attachment, yeah. Like, so you could have any one of those three fulfilling aspects and not need the other two. Now, I mean, the, the actual, the worldwide birth rate is declining now. Mm -hmm. So it's obvious that we, we don't need that yeah. anymore. Well, child rearing. this is her model that she believes is the basis of this. And, you know, we have a lot of leftover pieces of uh, parts that helped us in our brain when we were evolving from certain eras and certain states of being. Not necessary now, though. Yeah, I feel like those three aspects also, I mean, they, they apply to other aspects of our life because it's like the id, the superego, and the ego. Mm -hmm. um, for the You can assign them to the three of them. And they kind of drive us in all things, but we're we're more than our evolution now. We, kind of we like, can do more things besides have babies, everyone. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I want you to know you can do more with your life than have a baby. But if you want to have a baby, go for it. I guess that's the point of this? Yeah. Sure. I don't so, know. I don't know. That's why, that's why uh, Dr. Helen Fisher believes love is hard, even though these elements may not necessarily perform their desired function in today's era. Audience, what do you think? Is there more to it than this? Probably. Let us know below in the comments, and please be sure to subscribe for more. <laughs>